Hello everybody and welcome to this biology video on antigens and antibodies. Firstly, what is an antigen? Well, an antigen is a molecule that provokes an immune response. We'll come on to that part later on, but firstly, what physically is it? Well, an antigen sits on a cell's plasma membrane. If you think back to plasma membranes and cell surface membranes, if you think of glycoproteins and glycolipids, remember when we said they're on human cells, they act as receptors and they act as identifiers for white blood cells. Well, an antigen is essentially the same thing, but we find it on a pathogen. So a pathogen on its cell surface membrane will have glycoproteins and glycolipids, and they will have a specific shape. And that specific shape will provoke an immune response, which like I said, we'll come on to later. Next, we have antibodies. Now, an antibody is a large protein molecule with a specific complementary shape to a certain antigen. Now, I have a picture of an antibody here, okay? Um, you don't need to know this exact detail, I don't believe, but it's good to have a look at it anyway. So, our antibody is made of four heavy polypeptide chains, the purple parts. One, two, three, four. And they are all connected by disulfide bridges. That's what the SR sulfurs. And then we have two light polypeptide chains there, again connected by disulfide bridges. And we have a constant region and a variable region. Now the constant region is a part which never changes. No matter what antibody we're looking at, we get different types of antibody. No matter what antibody we're looking at, this region, this part of the antibody will always be the same. Those four heavy polypeptide chains and the two light polypeptide chains. And this hinge region in between which links them all together and that kind of gives it a little bit of flexibility allows it to move a little bit more but the variable region is the most important part and those are those four green hand looking things the variable region will have a specific shape which is complementary to an antigen so if you think about the antigen sitting on the plasma membrane of our pathogen of our bacteria the antibody will have the complementary, so reverse, inside out shape to that antigen. So in this case, we've got our green hand things and they they are forming clippers almost, as it were. That means that the antigen that they are complementary to must be triangular shaped in order to fit into that space. It's a bit like with enzymes and the lock and key idea. So, so far we have antigens, molecules, which sit on the plasma membrane, they have a specific shape and they provoke an immune response. And then next we have an antibody with a constant region, stays the same with all antibodies, and a variable region, which has a specific shape, complementary to, so reverse, to the specific antigen it is working with. So firstly, we need to know what antibodies are actually for. We've said that they have the re reverse complementary shape, to the antigen, but what? why does that benefit them? What do they actually use it for? So we have these two processes here that we need to know about. Firstly, we have neutralization. And you can see here on this cell, this is its cell is green uh, with the green nucleus in the middle. We have our antigens on the cell surface membrane, those purple triangular parts. And then we have our antibodies, which are the brown parts. They have the reverse complementary shape again to that antigen. And neutralization occurs when all of our antigens on the cell surface membrane have been uh, binded to by an antibody. Therefore, those antigens can't be used. So therefore, this we've disabled all the antigens, therefore we've disabled the pathogen. But why do you want to disable the antigen is something you're all probably wondering. Um, antigens are used by pathogens and bacteria to enter human body cells so that they can then replicate inside those cells. So if we, in this case, neutralize all of these antigens by binding an antibody to them, this means that the bacteria or the, or the pathogen cannot enter a human body cell, so therefore cannot do damage inside it. So neutralization, all of the antigens are bound to by an antibody, so this therefore disables the pathogen. Next we have agglutination, and agglutination occurs when we have more than one antibody stuck together. So in, phi, in, in here we have five antibodies all together in this sort of star shape, okay? And they each still have that individual complementary shape to the antigen. And in this case, we get 
each antibody or out of our five on our star thing binding to the antigen of a pathogen so we've got our antigen purple triangular green pathogen and the antibody one of the brown parts binding to that antigen and what this does is this essentially kind of sticks all of the pathogens together and disables their individual movement therefore they can't move towards a human body cell and into that body cell so therefore we've disabled the pathogens function and movement by sticking them all together